Gwinnett County Police have now identified the woman who was found dead at Yellow River Park yesterday morning. Police say 18-year-old Tori Lang from Lithonia was found shot to death under a tree at the park. Her body was found under this very tree where we are right now with a bullet in her head. Trying to stay strong and, you know, it's, it's a challenge, you know, because it you know, we wake up from time to time. I know I do, just hoping it was all a big nightmare. But, you know, we just try to cope with it the best we can. 18-year-old Tori Lane, also known to her family and friends as Kiwi, was from Georgia. She was very pretty, charismatic, with a good spirit. And by all accounts, she was very, very smart. Tori was... If I had to sum it up in one word, I would say phenomenal. She was uh, very intellectually inclined, very smart girl, uh, honor student, AP student, tutored other AP students. She really was a smart girl. This is a photo shoot we did for her um, for graduation. She graduated in 2020, and she didn't get a chance to have a, a traditional um, a traditional graduation because of COVID-19. So we still had our photo shoot, our moment um, for graduation. So we did a personal photo shoot for her. And she's wearing all her medals and cords and her diploma that she achieved in high school. Tori graduated with honors from Stevenson High School in Stone Mountain, Georgia. It seemed this girl was destined for greatness. Stevenson High School would be where she would meet a guy named Austin Ford, a young, handsome, athletic football player. They hit it off. They dated for a short period of time. But although the relationship didn't work out between the two, they remained very, very close. Some would even refer to him as Tori's best friend. Somebody she hung out with a lot. Somebody she was comfortable being around. Somebody she could confide in. So it wouldn't be far-fetched to believe that underneath all the glitz, the glamour, the medals, Austin knew some of Tori's darkest secrets. Tori showed up at Austin's apartment door late one night in July of 2021. By the following morning, Tori would be found shot in the head in Yellow River Park. Now, this is going to set off a chain of events that leaves Tory dead and Austin fighting for his freedom. Did he really kill her? Did Austin really kill Tory? That was the question. And during this trial ride, I'm going to give you the key witnesses. We're going to break down the key pieces of evidence. And you'll decide if this was murder. Now, in part one, Let's start with the timeline. Let's ride. When is the last time you remember seeing Tori? The last time I remember seeing Tori was on July 27 and 21. Um, you know what time it was? It was around 3.30 p.m. that day on a Tuesday. Um, the last time you saw her, did Tori have her phone? No, she didn't have her phone. Why not? She didn't have her phone because I was transferring our services over from Verizon to Xfinity. And that process was very tedious. It was very stressful. It took days for the, the porting to take place. Every day I was calling to port the lines over. It wasn't working. And you had I mean, to it took like hours, not really days, but like hours, and like a day or so. But both of them need to complete. Did you have to have her phone in order to port her number over to Xfinity? Yes. Uh, so as far as you know, did she have a phone with her the last time you saw her? No. So on Tuesday, July 27th, Teresa had last seen her daughter Tori at about 3.30 in the afternoon. I wonder where Tori was going. Because based off of the mother's testimony, we know that, one, Tori left the house, and she left without her phone. Why didn't Tori have her phone? During the trial, 
the state made it a point to have the mom, Teresa, her, explain why Tori was moving around without her phone. Teresa said that uh, she had Tori's phone because they were switching carriers and she needed her phone to do that. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, you know, but I understand the state's question because there could have been other reasons like maybe her and her mama got into it and her mama took her phone away from her. As parents, we do that sometimes as a punishment, you know? So I can see why the state wanted an explanation as to why Tori was moving around without her phone. Not having her phone is going to explain some of her movements later on that evening. Teresa said she went out that day, and she even claimed to have known that at some point that day, Austin had come by their house looking for Tori. I wonder what he wanted. Did he knock on the door? Did he just drive by? I wonder what he wanted. It wasn't clear at first how she knew that, but Teresa did make it a point to tell us this. Well, when I called him, I told him I knew that Tori came over because I seen her on the ring camera, my neighbor's ring camera, um, resurfing around 10.30, Tuesday night, I know, you know, she came back to the house. I knew she was leaving the house to go back over there because she went to the mailbox. And the way she got something out of her mailbox. I was like, I knew she came to your house because she came to the house around 1030. She left to go back out. And I knew she was coming by you. So wait a minute. Teresa was able to view a neighbor's camera. And that camera caught Tori coming home at about 1030 that night. She's seen on camera checking the mailbox, and then she leaves. Teresa automatically assumed that Tori was headed to see Austin. How did she know that? I mean, it makes me wonder if maybe Austin put something in the mailbox for Tori. Maybe like a note saying, hey, look, you know, when you get home, call me. Because don't forget, he can't call her. Tori does not have her phone. Hmm? So Tori stops by her house at 10.30 p.m. Now, we don't know if she went in or not. We wasn't given that detail. But Teresa told us that she checked the mailbox and then she left. And guess what? Teresa was correct about Tori going to see Austin because at 10.39, almost 10 minutes later, after leaving her own house, Tori was caught on the ring cam knocking on Austin's door. What did she want? When asked, this is what Austin told Teresa and the police. He made a statement about um, when Tori came over, she wanted $300 to find someone to hurt her. I'm like, hurt her? Like, what are you talking about? And what did she say when she showed up? Um, she had my wallet. She was trying to make me, um, kill her for my money. Really? Who would believe that? So, Austin told Teresa that Tori wanted $300 so she could find somebody to hurt her. And then he turns around and tells the police that Tori had his wallet and was trying to make him kill her for his money, meaning... In order to get his wallet back, he would have to kill Tori. I mean, does that sound believable to you? I mean, it's, it's possible. And if Tori had his wallet, if that part is true, if Tori had his wallet, it could explain why Austin went to her house looking for her. I wonder if they had been together earlier that day. Hmm. Because by 1030, 1040, Tori is at his apartment. And understand this. This is an apartment that Austin shared with his live-in girlfriend. Now, I can't remember if they said she had one kid or if there were multiple children there. But there's a child there. So Austin over there playing daddy. This is where he playing house. And now Tori is knocking on the door. She done popped up over there. Okay? 
But what really had me on pause is when they played the audio from the ring cam. Listen to this. Mm. So what do y'all think about that little exchange right there? You hear Tori say, I'm sorry. And then Austin, he like, you scaring me. You really scaring me. Now, why would he react like that? What did Tori do or say to him to warrant that response? To me, it sounds like Austin is worried about her. And whatever going on with Tori at this very moment, he can't, he can't wrap his mind around it. You can hear the concern in his voice. Austin then says, How long have you been out here? And Tori's response, I don't know. Now, based off of the mom's testimony, she was just at her house 10 minutes prior. So why when Austin asked her, how long you been out here? Why would her response be, I don't know. Something's not right here. Something's wrong, y'all. Teresa said that when she got home later that night, Tori was still not there. So she said she rode around looking for Tori, but could not find her. On the morning of July 28th, at around 6.20 a.m., this man right here called the police to report a female's body being found in Yellow River Park. And little did he know, Tori's case would make it on the first 48. 241 to radio. Why is we walked in? First responders arrive. Ma'am? And find a young woman. She's cold. Looks like a gunshot. Shot dead. Uh, I received a call that morning. Uh, I was up to take the next case as the lead investigator. Uh, so I received that call uh, on July 28th around 7 a.m. I was notified uh, that a uh, the body of the victim was located in Yellow River Park. Uh, so I got ready and made my way uh, to the park to go to the scene. Um, what did you What did you see, observe, and find at the scene? Uh, when I got to the scene, I uh, located the victim's body. It was just off of the parking lot, off of the footpath under a uh, large tree at the front of the park. Uh, and what was what were your next steps? Like, how did your investigation proceed after after you went to the scene? Uh, I searched the scene. We looked for uh, anything that we could relate back to the victim, trying to identify the victim. Uh, we didn't find any identification, cell phones, vehicles. Uh, located two shell casings uh, not far from the victim's body. Um, and at, obviously at that point we contacted the medical examiner's office uh, and then I began trying to locate any witnesses or surveillance footage and attempting to identify the victim. Uh, how did you go about attempting to identify the victim? Because is that important? Well, how did you go about it? Oh, the other direction. Is the identity of the victim important? Extremely important. Uh, the victimology is very important in our investigations. It tells us everything uh, about uh, the victim, ultimately how they may have gotten there, who they associate with, um, their past, uh, even their future in some cases. So at this point, the police don't know the identity of the person that they found in the park. They don't know that this is Tory. So they did their crime scene investigation, and while they was trying to piece together the case, Teresa is worried because Tori still had not shown up at home. So she reported Tori missing. Hmm? Um, who'd you report her missing to? I called the Cab County police because we lived in the Cab County to report her missing on Wednesday afternoon. Um, did you of also, 28th. Mm -hmm. go, I'm sorry. It was July 28th I reported her missing. I wonder exactly what time she reported Tori missing. Because we know that on Wednesday, July 28th, the police released information through the media on the unidentified body that they found in the park. 
Uh, so how did you attempt to go about identifying who would, the person, Tory Lang, who at that point was unidentified? Um, the victim had two uh, distinctive tattoos that we were able to locate on the body. Uh, we took photographs of those and released them to the news, uh, asking for any tips or help uh, to try to identify her. Uh, and did you receive any, any tips or help in finding her identity? Uh, we did. The family, uh, the victim's mother, reached out to the police department. They released photos of Tori's tattoos. Now, they only released photos of two, but we know that Tori had multiple tattoos like this one on the back of her neck. And she also had this one on the left side of her neck. And also this one on the right side of her neck. And then she had one on her wrist. Based off of these tattoos, they were able to put a name to their victim, Tory Lang. I found out what happened to Tory on the 29th, which was a Thursday. And I guess on what day was the young lady who you knew to be deceased identified as Tory Lang? Uh, that would have been the next day on the 29th of July. Uh, and did you? Did you personally go notify her parents of what had happened to her? I did. Whom did you speak to? Uh, I spoke to uh, the victim's mother, Teresa Lang. Um, just, just to Teresa Lang? Uh, I believe her husband was there as well. Did you, I guess, how did that conversation go? Um, understandably, Ms. Lang was upset. Uh, I explained uh, how we found uh, the victim and what we were looking at and asking for any history or anybody that she could have believed would be involved. Um, did she provide you any information uh, about Tori or about her friends? She did. She provided me uh, two names. One was the defendant and another was Marquesa Brown that she said were very close friends um, that I should speak with. Um, did she give you, um, did you search Tori's room, find uh, her car, anything like that? At that time, we had not located the vehicle. Uh, Ms. Lang stated that her weapon was missing, which was a SIG 9mm. Um, and we did go up to the victim's room, uh, and we located some letters uh, that the victim had written, uh, more like prayers to God from herself. So the police went to Tori's house on that Thursday, July the 29th. And, and they spoke to Tori's parents. I mean, I, I can't imagine what was running through their minds when the police told them what happened to their only daughter. As part of the investigation, they searched Tori's room and they found letters to God written by Tori. Those letters would become crucial to this case, just like Teresa's gun. Hmm. Um, did you also at some point report to police that your firearm was missing? Yes, I notified the detective, Gwinnett, the, the Gwinnett detectives when they came over to tell me what happened to Tori. At that time, I notified them about it. And that's when I really noticed it was missing. So Teresa noticed her gun was missing on Thursday, July the 29th. I wonder what made her start looking for her gun. Now we know Tori died from a gunshot wound. So was it Teresa's gun used on Tori? And if so, who took the gun from the house? Man, listen, the defense was all over this. And so when we start talking about how the gun left your home, you don't know how the, how your gun left your home. Is that right? Correct. You just know it was last in your home on July 19, 2020, 2021. Is that right? That's when I last put my eyes on it, yes. Okay, when you last put your eyes on it. So I told you. Teresa last seen her gun on July the 19th. We know that Tori was found shot the morning of the 28th. So at this point, we're talking nine days where Teresa has not seen her gun. So it, it, it takes me back to the question that I had before. Why are you looking for it now? Hmm? Timing is everything. It makes you wonder if Teresa knew or had a feeling that Tori took her gun. 
Remember when Austin said Tori was over there talking about uh, she was looking for somebody to hurt her and even went as far as asking him to do it. When the police interviewed Austin, this is what he had to say about the gun. Okay, did she ever tell you she had a way for you to kill her or anything? She didn't say you shoot her or anything, but I've seen the gun in the car. Did she tell you where she got the gun? Yeah, I'm on. So Austin knew that Tori had a gun with her. It was in her car, her blue Nissan Versa. So why would Tori take her mother's gun? What was she going to do with it? Listen, there was a lot of talk about Tori being suicidal. Teresa said it. She explained that in the past she had had suicidal thoughts. Austin said it. She was suicidal. She was fed up. And those letters that Tori wrote to God may have suggested that she was suicidal. Listen to this. Um... Let me start here with this question. Uh, to the best of your recollection, when was Tori Lang actually identified? On the 29th of July. 29th of July. And was it also on the 29th of July that you heard from, for the first time from Tori's mother that Tori might be suicidal? It was. Okay. And, and Tori's mother, I believe you said, gave you two names, Marquesa Brown and Austin Ford, as people that uh, she thought that you might want to speak to. Is that right? Correct. And then you spoke to Marquesa Brown before you spoke to Austin Ford. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And Marquesa Brown also told you that she thought Tori might be suicidal. Is that Jackson, right? Your Honor, also hearsay. Also... The characterization be suicidal is argumentative. The only testimony regarding suicide was that Sergeant Smith had heard from Teresa Lane that she had had thoughts in the past. So I object to, the question is calling for hearsay, and I object to the characterization uh, as being argumentative. Response? Um, I don't know the difference just between um, thinking about suicide uh, uh, or being suicidal. To me, those are the same things. Um, um, half a dozen, six. That's the same thing. Um, as to hearsay, I can withdraw it. All right. No need for me to rule. The question is being withdrawn. Did you hear from anyone else other than Tori's mother that, that there may have been suicidal ideations at some prior point in time? Do you want to respond? No. My client. I'm sorry. So are no. you withdrawing, withdrawing or rephrasing? Withdrawing. Okay. My client, Austin Ford, told you that Tory Lane might be suicidal. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Did he use that particular phrasing, suicidal, or did he say she had suicide thoughts in the past? Uh, he said she was suicidal. Right. He told you when you had the conversation that we just listened to that Tori, at the time she spoke to him, which was at about the time of her death, that she was suicidal. Is that right? Correct. That's the words he used, suicidal, right? Yes, sir. He had... Had Ms. Tory, had Tory Lang's mother told you that she had conferred with Austin Ford? Yeah, she said she had spoken to her friends. Yes. Did, did she say, hey, I spoke to Austin Ford and Austin Ford thought Tory was suicidal. That's why I'm telling you she's suicidal. Did she tell you that? I don't believe so, no. No, and you ended up procuring correspondence from Tory to God at about the time that you spoke to Tori Lang's mother, is that right? Correct. Why would you collect? Did you also collect a diary? Um, I believe just those letters, yes. Just those yep. letters. Why would you collect letters from the decedent to God? Why would you do that? Um, it was important to me in my investigation to see where her mindset had been at that point or even prior to this incident. The defense did a great job on cross-examination. And when me and my smoke sister sat through this trial, we labeled the defense attorney Mr. Butter because he was smooth like butter, baby. Everything about him was just smooth. His technique, his style, everything about him was smooth. And what he's trying to prove right here is that, again, Teresa knew Tori 
was suicidal, as did her closest friends. That's why the state was trying to shut down that line of questioning. They didn't want that out there. But Mr. Butter still got his point across. Mm-hmm. Let's get to these letters. All right, so let's go through these letters. You had three. Were these all the letters that you located? Yes. Okay. Did you act, did you did did you talk to family members after you reviewed these letters? Uh, I did. They were aware of the content of the letters. Okay. So I want to talk about. I'm going to hand up the letters first. States Exhibit 65. I think States Exhibit 65 is the collection of all three letters. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Um. Let me deal with the first one. The first one is, I say first because it's dated April 30th, 2021. Is that right? Correct. Okay. Now, and I say first because that seems to be chronologically the first one that would have been written if the date on it is correct, right? Yes. Got it. April 30th, 2021. Tori talks about halfway down the letter being put out of someone's home. Can you tell who that is? I can't read that exactly. I thought it may have said aunt, but I'm not 100% sure it's hard That's to tell. Either way, it, it indicates that, that she wrote to God that friends thought that she might be homeless. That, that word is clear in there, right? Correct. She might be homeless. April 30th, 2021, she's put out of somewhere, and friends think that she might be homeless. Did you speak to Tori's mother about that, whether Tori had been put out of her home or put out of her grandma's home? Uh, I don't believe so, no. Okay, were you aware when you were reviewing the letters and talking to Tori's people, her, her mother, father, grandmother, that, that, both, that Tori had a home with, with her mother relatively close to a home with her paternal grandmother? I believe so, yes. Okay, so there were two homes that were relatively close to one another, about 10 minutes apart, is that right? Correct. Okay, and when you spoke to the, Tori's family, did they indicate that Tori could stay at either home? Uh, I don't recall. Did they indicate that Tori had lived with either sets of family? I don't recall. Okay, but in that letter on April 30th, 2021, Tori talks about friends thinking she might be homeless. That's what it says. Is that right? Yes. So about 90 days before they found Tori deceased, she wrote a letter to God about being homeless. Now understand this. Based off of the testimony given in court, she was only staying in two places. She was staying at her parents' house and then her grandmother's house. And her grandmother only lived like 10 minutes away from them. So she was at both of those houses, okay? So if she was going to be put out of anywhere, it would either be grandma's house or her mama's house. Which one? May 1st, which I interpret to be the next day, May 1st of 2021, that, that letter to God is really just about money. Is, is that correct? Uh, correct. I believe it's about her trying to get back on her feet. Love you, Lord. Please send me money. I have to pay my insurance. Please send me money. That's what that letter's about, right? Correct. Please send me ideas so I can get money. Is that right? Correct. May 1st, 2021. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And that is the same, the same year that you found her because you found the body July 28, 2021. Is that right? Correct. So that letter, God, I need money. Please, can you send me money? Is about 90 days before Tori's death. Is that right? Yes. Okay. What kind of problems does she have? She has mostly have money problems, insurance and stuff. Austin claims Tori wasn't allowed to drive her car unless she started paying for her own insurance. So Tori was upset that if she got to take Ubers and stuff to get to work, she's not going to be able to make no money. The, I'm going to call it the last because I think it's the last chronologically. The letter's dated June 1st, 2021. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And that letter, again, to God, I, I'm feeling stuck. Spiritually, financially, emotionally, I'm feeling stuck. That's that. That's the that's the surmise of the ju of the June first, 2021 letter. Is that right? Correct. Okay, and that's 60 days before 
um, she's, uh, she's found in Yellow River Park. Is that right? Correct. Okay. And those were the only three letters that you took from the home. Is that right? Correct. Were those the only three letters that, that you found there? I believe so, yes. Okay, and I say found. Did the family hand you those letters? Did the family sort of open the door and you went in the room and you did your own search? How did that, describe that to me, how that, how that happened? Uh, the family told me they were located upstairs in her room uh, on a, I believe it was a dresser, uh, and they had gone up there with us, but they didn't hand them to me. They okay. just told me where to locate them. Okay, so the family knew that there were letters. Correct. Okay, did the family indicate that there had been any other letters than the letters that, that they were suggesting that you take with you? Not to my knowledge. Okay, so, the, so, so, so no one in the family told you that there may have been more letters? Not to my knowledge. Okay. Did the fam anyone in the family indicate to you how often Tori would write to God? Uh, no. They had three letters from Tori, all of which painted a picture of a young girl who was really just trying to get her life together. And she seemed to be struggling with that. So the defense had to break down these letters. And don't forget, the police got these letters on the same day that Teresa, one of the first things she told them, was that Tory was suicidal. So were the letters just used to back up the claim that Tory was suicidal? I mean, that's what it sounded like to me. I'm just saying. And the defense needed the jury to understand the letters and how the police got the letters. And we learned that the family told them where the letters were. So her parents knew about the letters and that's why the defense was insinuating that there may have been more letters. But the family only directed the police to three of them. Hmm? Um, were there letters that you also gave to Corporal Smith when Corporal Smith came to the house? Letters I gave him? Letters, he letters. collected, he went in Tory room and collected her journals. Okay, so... It was so, separate sheets of journals that she was journaling. All right, Detective Smith collected her collected collected any correspondence that he thought was relevant from Tory's room. Is that right? Mm -hmm. He did, collected everything. Did, yeah. Did, did he show you any of the letters or the diaries that he collected from Tory's room? I saw some of them. Um, it was basically she was journaling to God, praying to God. She journaled. She prayed to God, and she journaled to God when she just reading, reading or whatever. It was just basically journal issues. Um, I didn't read all of them. Okay. Did you see anything in the journal that it would that would have led you to believe that she and Austin weren't best friends in July of 2021? Well, the journal wasn't about her best friends or anything like that. It was just like I said, she was just praying to God and stuff like that. She prayed by writing it. I understand. Do you, do you, did, did you understand my question? Yes. My question was, was there anything in the journal that would indicate that she and Austin were not best friends in July of 2021? Objection, Your Honor. Uh, I, I'll allow it. Um, if you can answer that question, ma'am, please do so. I didn't read everything, so what I read was only about God. That's all I saw. Okay. Okay, so what, wait a minute. Teresa said that she seen some of the letters and that she didn't read all of them. Hell, there was only three. So do y'all see what the defense attorney just did here? He put her in a trick bag. By her saying that, in my mind, she's indirectly telling us there were more letters. I mean, at, at least that's what it looks like to me. What do y'all think about this? Austin's defense was that Tori was suicidal and she killed herself. I didn't think she would do that. I didn't think anybody in their right mind would do that. Well, she obviously found somebody who was willing to do it. But we just need to find out who that is and where her car went. After they found Tori in the park, they were looking for her blue Nissan Versa. It wasn't there. So who moved it? By the time they found her car, on August the 1st, this is how they found it. Yeah. Burned up. Who did that? Man, listen. Austin had a lot of explaining to do. And they labeled this case a murder, and they charged him. 
So, in part two of the trial ride for Tory Lane, we're going to break down Austin's movements from the time we see him on that ring cam up until they found Tory that morning. So, stick with me. We still riding, baby. <laughs> 